Hello, chemistry students. We're going to calculate a limiting and excess stoichiometry problem and the percent yield, as well as these six things. In order to write the correct reactants and products, as well as their predicted states of matter, make sure you have an ion sheet or your ions memorized. You also have a way to predict the state of matter of your products. That includes a solubility rules or a solubility chart. All right, the first step is to write the ballast equation. So our first reactant is sodium hydroxide. Sodium is Na and it's a one plus ion. Hydroxide is OH and it is a one minus ion. So that's the correct formula for sodium hydroxide. We're gonna put it in solution. So that means it's aqueous or dissolved. Next is copper two chloride. That means we have copper with a two plus charge. Chloride is a one minus charge, and that means we're gonna end up needing two of those chloride ions to balance the copper's two plus charge, and it also is gonna be in solution. This is a double replacement reaction where you have two metal cations and two anions that are going to try to switch partners and bond to create two separate products. The first product is gonna be sodium Again, attempting to bond with the chloride ion, one plus and one minus. We will look up the solubility rules after. Next, you need to have your copper try to bond with the hydroxide. Remember that hydroxide is a one minus, so you're gonna end up needing two hydroxides to bond with the copper two plus. So this is where you're going to need to find your solubility rules or your solubility chart, and you're going to need to look up that. Sodium chloride is, is soluble in water, and copper 2 hydroxide is not. The last step is going to be balancing the equation. You have one sodium ion on both sides. There's one hydroxide here, two here. So you're going to need to put a coefficient of two in front of the hydroxide, the sodium hydroxide. That makes two sodium, but that's okay. There's two chloride here, and right now we only have one of each, so we're going to have to put a coefficient in front of the NaCl. And then for good measure, I'm going to put the ones in front of the other two ions. There's your balanced equation with a 2 to 1 to 2 to 1 mole ratio for your reactants and your products. All right, on to the next step, which is calculating the theoretical mass of precipitate. So the theoretical... Uh, mass is going to be the amount that we can produce, not in lab, but in theory on paper. So we're going to start with sodium hydroxide, which is 1.04 grams of sodium hydroxide. We're also starting with 1.04 grams of copper 2 chloride. The next step is going to be converting those into moles by using molar mass. I have the molar masses already, but I, you would have to look them up and add up all of the atomic masses on the periodic table. I've already done this. Most people would probably just use 40 grams for sodium hydroxide, but I'm going to use 39.99, and that's if I had one mole, which I do not have. I only have one gram, so I have a lot less than that. The other molar mass is 134 0.45 grams of copper to chloride. Again, if I had an entire mole of copper to chloride. Now, in the past, I would stop at this point and calculate the moles and figure out which one's limiting and which one's excess. But this time, I'm gonna show you another method of how you can just go to the product. In this case, we're trying to find how many grams of copper hydroxide, which is our precipitate, and it will be blue, are possible. And again, this is theoretically, so this is gonna be called a theoretical yield or theoretical mass. So what I'm gonna do is just go for this sodium hydroxide. I'm gonna go and calculate the mass of copper two hydroxide I can create. And then I'm gonna run another problem where I do the same thing here is calculate the same mass again. And then I'll show you how you pick which one is limiting with this method. So next step is to say that if I have two moles of sodium hydroxide, for my balanced equation, I would produce one mole of copper two hydroxide. I'm gonna just keep going with this problem, which is the other scenario. If I used up all of my 1.04 grams of copper two chloride, 
I would produce one mole to one mole of those two, copper two chloride to copper two hydroxide. And then with this method, this is kind of handy. Yet the molar mass would be the same, obviously, because we're comparing to the same product. We're just running two separate scenarios. So now we need the molar mass of copper two hydroxide, which I've already added up. Again, you would need to use your periodic table. 97.56 grams of copper two hydroxide. And I'll show you how this method works. This is a great method if you don't have to calculate any excess um, masses. If you just have to calculate a product, it's theoretical amount, and then calculate which one's limiting. So I'm just gonna show you the top one so that we can save some time here. So if I take 1.04 and then I divide it by 39.99, if I stop at this point, which I have in the past, this is the moles of sodium hydroxide that I have. So let's say we're going to produce this product. So we're gonna divide by two moles, multiply by one, and then times 97.56. And then this is the theoretical mass that we could produce to uh, 1.27 grams. If we were to consume all the 1.04 grams of sodium hydroxide. So what you do is you run the same problem again to save some time, I've already done the math. And we get this mass rounded to three significant figures. And what this is telling us, since we compared it to the same product, only one of these is the actual amount we can make. And it's the smaller of the two numbers because this would be if I consumed all of the sodium hydroxide, this would be if I consumed all the copper two chloride. And since this is the smaller mass, what that means is copper two um, uh, chloride is going to be our limiting. And then sodium hydroxide is going to be our excess. So that means we won't use all that uh, sodium hydroxide, the 1.04 grams. And then what, what the case is they met, or sorry, the, the case ends kind of here at this point with that being our theoretical mass. So that's our first answer for number two there. All right, the other thing I did figure out is I also figured out which one was limiting. So the limiting is copper um, two chloride. Oops, misspelled it there, it's all right. Copper, put it in words too, two chloride. Let's ignore that. And then percent yield, let's do that right away also. Okay, so I said that in an experiment, I would get, for example, and I'll show you the experiment later, 0.68 grams of this precipitate right here. So we didn't get the theoretical, remember, one more time, this is the theoretical mass or the theoretical yield. So in lab, I got 0.68. So percent yield is calculated by taking the actual mass in lab, dividing it by your theoretical mass, multiplying it by 100, and then if you do this, this is the answer I got with two sig figs is 90. It was actually 90.1, um, but I can only keep two significant figures. So there's my percent yield. Remember, this is your actual uh, or your, your lab, you know, your lab value. And then this is where your theoretical value goes, right down there. There's another thing you could do, which is calculate percent error. I just thought I'd throw this in here also. Percent error is by taking the theoretical minus the actual divided by the theoretical, and then multiply by 100. And this might be even an absolute value if you had a value that was higher. Sometimes that can happen, especially if you have incomplete drying. And with significant figures, this ends up being 9.9. .9. So usually, in most cases, the percent yield plus the percent error, this doesn't work all the time, should be about 100%. It's almost what you got and what you didn't get, your error that you had. All right, so there's the one, two, three, and four. So now off to the hard part of the problem, which is definitely calculating that excess mass. So I'm gonna go back to the method I've showed you before to calculate that. All right, on to the last step, which is number five for our stoichiometry type calculations before the experiment. I already have the molar masses ready to go to save some time. The first step for calculating the excess, if you have to do this for a problem, is by finding the mole amounts of your two reactants. So my first mole amount I showed you before was 0 0.0260 moles of NaOH. All right, the other one again, you take 1.04, you divide it by 134.45, and then that one would be 
0 0.00774 moles of copper to chloride. All right, so those are our, our have. So in my class, I usually tell students, let's label these as what we actually have. One of these will be our limiting. We already know which one in this case, but if we solve the problem this way, we wouldn't. One of these is limiting, one of these is excess. I'm already kind of aware of that. But what I'm gonna do is show you the method to find the moles that you would um, use. So I'm gonna prove the fact that this one was limiting. I'm gonna start with this mole amount. Oops, point zero. Two six zero. So make sure you see that's a zero. And then that was the moles of NaOH. And then what you need to do is you need to use the mole ratio of for every two moles of sodium hydroxide, you would need one mole of copper to chloride to react that mole amount away. Remember that's a zero, I made a mistake there. And the answer to this is, and I'll just keep going without grabbing my calculator, 0130 moles of copper to chloride. So this is just another way to prove um, that that is larger than that number and that definitely is our limiting, which we already knew. But let me show you the other method. This is the number that we definitely need. So we're gonna take the point 0, 0.0774 moles of copper to chloride which is our limiting, and this is gonna be a double proof of it, that we would use one mole, it's the same mole ratio, it's just um, inverted, one mole of copper to chloride for every two moles of sodium hydroxide. And this is the important number that we need, 0 0.0155 moles of sodium hydroxide is the amount of sodium hydroxide that we're going to use of the excess reactant, okay? So again, this number is smaller than that one, which again, that's why this is our excess. That's the excess that we have. This definitely was our limiting. And this number is really of no value now. This number is important. This is the amount that we're gonna use of our excess reagent, okay? What I'm gonna do is calculate the mass that is unused first and show you a couple methods, but this is the one that I prefer. We don't need the mole ratio anymore. So we're gonna take the fact that we had 0 0.0260, because this is pretty common, that they want the amount of this 1.04 that's not used. And we're gonna subtract it from the 0 0.0155 moles. This is both for the NaOH, I didn't label that one. And then this equals 0 0.0150 moles of NaOH. And this would be the amount of sodium hydroxide that was unused. So if you wanna turn it into mass, you just take that and multiply it by the molar mass that we already had for sodium hydroxide. Remember number unit label here. And then if you check, you get 0 0.402 grams of NaOH that was um, uh, unused. So this would be the mass of the uh, reactant here. So this would be our unused excess. So what we can do also do is just check that if you take 1.04 and you subtract it from 0 0.402, this is just another way we can, I'll show you to get the same answer. We get point, um, let's see, 62 with significant figures. That's the mass of the sodium hydroxide that was used of the uh, material that you had. So this was the used of the excess. And if you wanna check, there's one more thing we can do. I'm just gonna cover all the bases with this last problem. You could have just taken this number and multiplied this number by 39.99. I'm just gonna skip labels just to do a tiny bit. Well, maybe I won't save some room here. We'll just do that one. So let me just prove that I should still get this 0.62-ish with some rounding. And then multiply it by 39.99. And then there we go, we get 0.62 within rounding. So I've kind of shown you many different ways to kind of do the same thing uh, for anything that has to do with that excess.